There's always that one hair. <laughs> Hey everybody, I am Suzanne and thanks for joining me today. If you like to watch painting tutorials, product reviews, anything art, then you came to the right place and that's what you're gonna find here on this channel. So thanks for joining me. And if you don't mind, go ahead and subscribe. We'll go ahead and get that out of the way. And we're going to jump into a little painting that was inspired by the fact when I was little, I was, when I say was little, but really I'm still, <laughs> I'm 55 years old and I'm still doing it today. But uh, I was always catching things, catching all kinds of, well, whether it's frogs or turtles or snakes or birds, baby rabbits, all kinds of, all kinds of things. It just seemed to always find me. <laughs> and I was always trying to catch things. Well, one day on my way to school, I found a little baby stoat. Now, for those who aren't familiar with what a stoat is, a stoat is one of the smaller uh, members of the weasel family and they're just adorable and they're also known as ermine in the winter time when they turn white they're known as ermine so these little guys are just they're just little they're not very big and they can take down prey much larger than them they're known to take down rabbits and these things are you know they're like this big but they're amazing feisty fun little creatures and you know, I was reminiscing back in the time when I had one and I loved him. He was a neat little pet. And I know we're not supposed to keep wild animals as pets, but he was raised up as a baby and he, he lived a good little life with us at our house. And he um, was an awesome little guy. And he, but you know, he does, he did stink. <laughs> he did smell since he is of the mustard eye family. That includes mink, uh, skunk, <laughs> otters, ferrets, all those little, those animals do have a scent about them. But anyway, this painting was inspired by that little guy. And so I'm going to take you on a little journey into the painting of a stoat today. So sit back, have fun, watch this video, and maybe perhaps you'd like to paint along at some point. So, okay, let's go ahead and jump into that stoat. All right, guys, here is my palette. Now I am doing, um, the little stoat and he's in his summer colors so summer colors being that he is kind of basically burnt sienna ish um, and in the winter he will be white but here we go I have um, cadmium yellow light I have oh boy what is that one hmm oh that's a cad deep cad yellow deep I have a vermilion I have yellow ochre, I have brown ochre, I have burnt sienna deep, I have um, burnt umber, I have capit mortem, I have uh, Mars violet deep, I have, hmm, um, that's a uh, brown matter, I have dioxazine purple, titanium white, I have a little bit of the 12 shades of gray, um, light gray, I have the 12 shades of gray, blue gray. I have king's blue and I have ivory black. Okay, so that is what we'll be starting with today. The starting lineup of the color palette of Sue Zan Barrett Justice. But funny thing is, you know, I will probably discover that there's gonna be colors that I need that I haven't put down yet. So that's obviously gonna come. But I am starting off with a little light sketch and I have a little reference over here that I've actually copied off um, one of the free sites. And um, it will be manipulated quite a bit because I'm going with a different background altogether. But here's our little stoat ready for action. Hey, I am actually painting from home today. It's, um, this is being taped on, uh, on actually Labor Day and opted to stay home. So I am doing this today on my Edge Pro gear setup and it is a sweet little setup we you can always check out the video that i did as far as the review on this particular easel uh, but it's perfect for when you just want to kind of set up and do something um, impromptu it's super lightweight easy and since i am working from home today i have to just to go ahead and do it this way but obviously you can see my entire setup right here and the mediums that i'm using are um 
I'm just using a little Gamsol and some spike oil. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into this little stoat. Okay, so I wanted to show you the proper angle so that it doesn't look completely distorted because when you look at it from this angle constantly, it looks a little funky, a little distorted, but hopefully this is a little bit more correct. Anyhow, um, the background color that I'm putting in here is actually a combination of burnt umber and, oh goodness, Prussian blue and the, oh goodness, what green is it? It's... Hmm. It's a really intense, oh, it's hooker's green, sorry. So it's hooker's green, uh, burnt umber, and oh, I'm sorry, my dog is barking. She's old and she thinks she hears things when there's really no sound. But anyhow, and I want to go ahead and leave a little edge because I'm always, I want to try to create that little bit of a glow around this little uh, stoat. So what's gonna end up happening is this background here, it's going to be very dark, but I may suggest some plant life and things like that. And then I'm having him um, perched on just almost like a rock bed. They generally like to have shelter in like old stone walls and, and wood piles. And you know, they need, they need to have, um, you know, they, they like their shelter. So I always, you know, I never want to leave my animals unprotected when I'm painting them. So. Anyhow, so these will become rocks. So I'll probably be putting in a lot of the dark values in around the rocks. I want to use a lot of greens in the rocks so they will have moss and that sort of thing on them. Simply because I'm using a lot of orangey reds and um, so orangey reds and greeny blues really look nice together, I think. That's a nice complimentary boost to a painting. So anyway, I just wanted to go ahead and, and show you what I've got here. And of course, here's the palette and it is a big old mixed up mess but basically here i have a lot of my um, stoke colors i have the cooler versions of some of the stoke colors uh, i did add some other um, paints to the palette since i initially opened up here today i did add a little bit of um, michael harding's uh, magenta it's a criticadone type magenta and i over here is some of the background colors that they added the prussian blue the hooker's green, the, the, <laughs> the other green that I haven't touched yet, but I'll let you know what that is, and the umber. So you can see this is basically uh, what I'm dealing with here. And this is about where the little stove is at this point. So we'll continue on to time lapse. Okay, we 
are getting to a place where I'm not able to do as much of the fun detail on the stove himself as I would like because he's pretty wet and uh, just my I've got I've got people coming over this e this evening and I gotta wrap it up for the day so I just wanted to show you where I'm probably gonna be leaving off very soon I wanted to get paint on the rocks and um, and I explained earlier that I wanted to be able to include a lot of the complementary colors. So I, I wanted to have some blues to go with my oranges and greens to go with the reds. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm, I'm just kind of laying these rocks in and I'm, I just want to make them look, I don't know, craggy. Is that a good word? I just want them to look like good rocks. <laughs> Simple as that. But I'm just kind of laying some stuff in and putting moss in some spots and, and I'm just kind of winging it. I'm not really, I don't have a big plan on these rocks. I just want to get paint on all my surfaces so I can finish this up in my studio at home, uh, at home, at my studio a lot tomorrow. So this will be a to be continued piece, I guess you could say. We'll jump into it tomorrow too. I just wanted to tell you. Oh, and two, I had forgotten my paint scraper. And anybody who knows me knows I love, love, love my paint scraper, but I forgot. So the whiskers today were created by using the end of my paintbrush. <laughs> I just used the end, the sharp end of my paintbrush and was able to scrape that paint out. That actually makes a very soft, believable whisker. And so that's a, that's a little trick that y'all can do too. It, it does make, for a good whisker. So, okay, so this is probably very close to where I'm gonna leave it off today. I may paint a little bit more of the rocks though.
Well, I think it turned out okay. Um, I really did enjoy doing the stoat piece. It was, it was, it brought me back to my childhood and my, and my friendly little stoat that I had that, that stayed with me for a long time. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions about anything that I went over in this video, please leave it in the comment section. I'd love to answer them for you. It could be about my paints, my palette, my paint brushes, or perhaps you want to ask me about my little stoat. That'd be fine. I look forward to that kind of thing. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That means a lot too. And if you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell so that you'll know when the next video comes out. And again, thank you so much for being here and from, well, <laughs> my dining room in Kingsport, Tennessee. I'll see you. Bye.